Welcome to Chris's Corner. This is Chris with Craft Closet. Today we're going to talk about different ways to color acrylic. Right now I'm taking the masking off of the pieces I'm going to use. I will show you several different methods, but let's start with dyeing acrylic. I'm very excited about dyeing acrylics. I searched the internet for different ways to dye acrylic and I thought we would go through them together and see what works. First, let's start with the most popular. This way uses RIT dye. You can buy it at Walmart or stores like that. It is usually in the laundry section where you buy the laundry detergent. The different theories we're going to try all include water that reaches temperatures of 200 degrees. So not quite boiling. So let's get started with heating the water. Now we're going to try four different techniques. Water and dye. Water dye and rubbing alcohol water dye and vinegar, water dye and acetone fingernail polish remover. Our water is hot so let's put these together. I am using a 3 to 1 ratio, 3 parts water, 1 part dye. And then I will be adding the same amount of the other ingredients as the dye. So what I'm doing here is 3 fourths cup water, 1 fourth cup of dye, and 1 fourth cup of the other ingredients. Now we'll just add our different test acrylic pieces. Okay, now we have to wait 10 minutes. You can wait longer if you want a deeper, darker dye, according to the internet. Now we're going to take the pieces out of the dye and put them in a tub of hot soapy water to rinse. So how did we do? Let's take a look at each piece. The water and dye worked a bit. I like the tint it gives the acrylic. I would do this method if I wanted to make something like green glass or a different color of tinted glass look. The water, dye, and vinegar didn't work at all. In fact, it doesn't do anything. The water, dye, and alcohol, it didn't work either. I'm surprised about this because some blogs I read said this is the method that works the best. The water dye and fingernail polish remover? Wow! I'm impressed with this one. This is by far the best mixture. Okay, let's try some other methods that I read about on the internet. This one is combining Mod Podge with food coloring. So let's combine the two. Then we will paint it onto one of our test pieces. I'm a little worried about how this is going to look in the end. I think the brush strokes will show up. So let's try it a different way and pour it on. Okay, now we need to cure these pieces so I'm going to put them in an oven that's set at 200 degrees for one hour. This ought to be interesting. Okay, so now everything needs to dry and cure, so we'll come back later. Well, it's curing. Let's try some more methods. This is pink ultra dye, and I'm just going to paint it on and then rub it off so that it only shows up the engrave. Another method where you can use sandpaper to rough up the surface of the acrylic, and then use spray paint or acrylic paint. So let's do that one too. With the spray paint, I'm going to do two layers just to see what happens. Metallic on the bottom and a blue one on the top. This one is gold ink. Let's paint it on and then rub off the extra so that it only fills the engrave. So this is alcohol ink. We're just going to paint it on. For the acrylic paint, I'm going to brush it all over and wipe off the excess so, so that it only stays in the engraves. I'm also going to paint some over this alcohol ink and see if it stays on. Thinking about our first experiment, and I was wondering if, wonder if this method will work without the hot water. It says online that the water opens the pores of the acrylic, allowing it to accept the dye, but it would be easier if could just skip that step altogether. So let's experiment. 
For this next experiment, I'm going to combine everything in the solo cup, the dye, the fingernail polish remover, and no water, and just put in small pieces to see what happens. So let's wait 10 minutes and we'll see what happens. Okay, this is a beautiful dye, but it has some whitish stuff on it that seems to be bedded into the acrylic and it doesn't wash off. I've investigated this and found out that this was as the paint or material from the solo cup and that it adheres to the acrylic. So lesson learned, don't use a solo cup. Also, it shows that if the pieces are touching each other in the dye, that those overlapping spots don't get the dye. This could be cool if in the future you want to create shapes on the acrylic or other things on the acrylic. I want to make sure this really does work, so I'm going to try it again, and this time I'm going to use a glass glass. Wait 10 minutes again and use our magic. Wow, I love it! Okay, so what we found out here is that you don't necessarily need the hot water. I think if you're dyeing a large piece or lots of small pieces, you might want to add the hot water to make the dye go further, but it doesn't seem to be necessary for the process to work. I want to bend these into bracelets now. I love this file and I will have a link in the comments below so that um, you can make these bracelets too if you'd like. I got this on Etsy. Okay, so I'm going to um, use a heating and bending process and we'll just do it quickly since this video is not about how to bend acrylic. Okay, I probably should have let these dry a little longer first kind of made a mess and got blue on a number of these. Unfortunately, it doesn't rub off. So we will just pretend that I wanted it to look like that. I love how they all bend. The brace of files is a fun one. Everything is dry, so let's see what happens. The acrylic paint looks really good in the engraves. When it's just painted on, it seems to scratch off a bit easier than the spray paint on the non-engraved part. The gold acrylic metallic colors look really great in the engraved, and it doesn't seem to come off. I also really like this ultra dye. It looks great in the engraved. Alcohol ink works pretty well. It does feel a little sticky though, so probably needs more time to dry. Spray paint gives a really cool effect. I think this could be really neat on a box or something, but on a bracelet it might not hold up to the wear and tear. But it doesn't appear to scratch off that easy, so it might work on a different design. The Mod Podge method works, but again it left the brush lines and kind of some globs, but it stays on really good. It doesn't scratch off. We'll have to try this again sometime. I wonder about thinning the mixture, maybe putting a thinner mixture into a spray bottle and spray it on and see if that works. So here are the finished bracelets. Let's have a look at all of them. They all look pretty good, but my favorite are the dyed ones. The plain water and dye gives it a nice tint. I haven't ever seen a color like this before. It's a one of a kind piece. The ones with the engraves only filled in seem to work really well too. I like these. I like the others, but I don't think they would work well for bracelets. So these dyed ones, I didn't actually make a bracelet of um, since it was an experimental thing. But I love the acrylic and how it looks with the dye, especially the Stardust one. I can think of a lot of ways to use this in the future. I can tell that the dye doesn't scratch off at all. It is by far the best solution to coloring acrylic. I hope you've enjoyed our journey through different methods of coloring acrylic. Thanks for watching. The next video is amazing, trust me. So like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out.